Elite vampiric warriors dedicated to combat mounted atop their undead chargers. Blood knights revel in the death of their foes, pursuing new heights of glory. Hey everyone, it's Luke from Night of the Tabletop. Hope you're keeping well. So today I'm dropping you a review on a bit more soul-like grave lords, in particular the Blood Knights. So if you watch my other video, you will know these are perhaps my favorite models in the entire game. And why? Because for years they absolutely battered me every single damn week. So if you can't beat them, join them. So when I say they beat me every single damn week, this was of course back in about 2005, 2006, 2007, so a long time ago. And it still sits very deep within inside me and I'm very sad and very upset that I still got beaten by these week in, week out. But with Manfred, honestly, these guys were absolutely incredible. So with the coming about of the Soul Blight Grave Lords, they re-released these beautiful models and updated them, which I'm so happy because if anyone can remember the old fine cast models or even further back, if they can remember the metal models, they were still beautiful. Don't get me wrong. However, they were crappy to build. And we all prefer plastic, let's be honest. No one likes really building metal or painting metal. And Fine Cast had its own problems. Forge World, need to update more stuff, please. Anyway, so let's take a quick look inside the box for the Blood Knights. So for the first part of our review then, let's look at the, let's look at the models inside the box. How easy is it to build? So let's have a quick open up. Cellophane off. As you can see, the artwork on this box, sublime. Absolutely sublime. So Blood Knights, we'll go through the rules in a bit more detail later on. But as you can see, the sprues themselves actually do look decent, they look fantastic. Some of the um, some of the details, especially on things like the flags and like here, honestly, absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love that. And all in all, you've got to think, five beautiful models, three spirit sprues, that is um, a win. So I'm happy with that. Build itself looks relatively easy, looks relatively simple. Everything is numbered, so you can tell it's one of the newer packs because they still do, GW, obviously, they still have some of the older lines for other models about, and that's when you're not using numbers, things like that. So sometimes they can be a bit more pain to build. However, this one here is, even looking inside the booklet here, everything is perfectly numbered just to make the life so much easier. So there's no issues for anyone building. So people like me, you know, nice, simple, happy with this. Anyway, we'll get them together. We'll get them built. Before we do that, let's look at the rule. So with the rules for the Blood Knights, for 195 points, you get five Blood Knights. And what does that give you really? Well. It doesn't matter which weapon choice you, you choose. I picked the Templar Lance purely because for me and the way I used to remember Blood Knights were they all had lances and it looked pretty badass. So they have a range of one. They have three attacks each. Hit on threes, wound on threes, a minus one rend and one damage. The horses also get three attacks each. Four to hit, four to wound and one damage. With your Castellan, which is your champion, you get an add one to the attack's characteristics and with a standard bearer for you get to re-roll one for deathless minion battle trait for this unit. So also as well as that, without any uh, any other ability things at all round, pretty decent. So with their abilities then, this is where it makes them absolutely different to the normal standard cavalry. You have the hunger. So at the hunger at the end of the combat phase, if an enemy models or slain by wounds inflicted by this unit's attacks in that phase, you can heal up D3 wounds allocated to this unit. And that means you can actually start healing wounds back and that makes life so much easier and gives more staying power to this unit on the battlefield. The next ability you have is Martial Fury. So this is add one to the damage characteristics for this unit's Templars or Blades if this unit made a charge. So this is perfect. You wanna make sure you're getting the charge on with this unit. And all of a sudden you've got three attacks each Minus one rend, two damage. And that's when things start to pile up and you're getting more and more reliable on the field. To even top this off then, 
In your movement phase, if this unit is within three inches of an enemy unit, it can make a normal move. If so, it can pass across other models with a wound's characteristic of three or less that do not have a mount in the same manner as a model that can fly. Perfect for movement. But also, after this unit has made a normal move, you roll a dice for each enemy unit this model has, and these models pass so across by this models in this unit, on a two plus, the enemy suffers D3 mortal wounds. So you're doing damage before you turn into charge the next turn do even more damage honestly this is fantastic um and what i do like about this model is, these models as well if you take the castellite dynasty which i am these become battle line which means if you want a more elite soul blight army you can have a more elite soul blight army and you're not relying on hordes of skeletons or zombies and you can fit it to your play style and depend how you want to play as you say i like to play more elite Therefore, I can go more elite. So, with those rules, you can hopefully you can see why I'm running them. I'm getting my thousand points list. I've got two squads of these, and it's quite fair. When I go to two thousand points, I'm probably gonna have more blood knights because I just love them. I love them as models. I love their rules. I love everything about them. So, importantly, now, what they look like when built. Time to see. If you want to know more about a monochrome theme and how I did it, you can watch my previous video on painting up and the review on Cardo Ezeshah, and it has a detail of how I've done that. Also, I've got a little tip with the bases. You'll have a bit more information soon on the base and how I did the bases, but what I want to do was contrast against the monochrome and make something be the exact opposite of undead, and that is show complete life. So I've got flowers, bushes, luscious green grass, just to really just contrast with the model itself, but give the contrast between life and death. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure you hit the thumbs up. Please let me know in the comments your thoughts on the Blood Knights, or if there's any other models in the Soul Blight unit that you prefer, or any other cavalry that you prefer in general, because there's a lot of cavalry in the Age of Sigma universe. Thank you for watching again, and I'll see you next time.